Welcome to the ninth edition of the Curriculum, a collaboration between the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation and Star Ghana, with a focus on identifying the reasons behind the relatively poor performance of public sector basic schools and encouraging public debates and action by policy makers to resolve the underlying issues. We are still in Cape Coast, the central regional capital and home to a host of secondary schools, including some of the nation's finest. The University of Cape Coast, a publicly funded institution with a special interest in training teachers, is also situated here. As we have seen in the previous two episodes, the educational picture in Cape Coast at the basic level is not a pretty one. Results have been among the worst in the country, causing concern among the educationists, traditional and political leaders, and civil society. The situation is so dire that it is indeed a rarity for a Cape Coaster to gain admission to one of the elite schools in the municipality. Reasons assigned for this deplorable state of affairs include parental irresponsibility or neglect, and a wholesale engagement by pupils in extracurricular social activities to the neglect of their studies. Today, however, we shine the spotlight on the role of teachers and monitoring by their supervisors. The poor performance of students in Cape Coast municipality, greater portion of the blame should be put on the doorsteps of uh, education officers. The supervision is very, very, very low. Therefore, teachers also do whatever they do. In fact, some supervisors report to me that they don't even have vehicles to visit the schools that they're supposed to visit. So somebody will be in a school for a whole term. No officer has visited the school to check whether you are doing the right thing or not. I always have this adage that if you don't inspect, do expect. Supervision at public school is very, very poor. The secretary supervisor is not well resourced you know, to embark on regular uh, supervision of the various schools within his circuits. The structures must be resourced. That is the first thing. If it is resourced, you have to account for the resources that are provided. Two, the collaboration. I keep on talking about it. If we cannot collaborate, the structures will be there, nothing will happen. The third issue is taking ownership of the schools, especially at the local level or the grassroots level, where we have the PTA and the SMCs. If they take ownership and report to the immediate bosses, like the district chief executive, and report to the district directors, and finally to the regional directors, so that we take action on teachers who are not working, I think we will move the structures to a very perfect level. Let me say, I use this experience. Just a mobile phone chip and the units to recharge. I gave to one SMC chairman in a village where I was a district director. One day I had a report, the head teacher is taking the children to a cocoa farm to weed on his cocoa farm. Immediately I took my car, used my own money to buy fuel, drove there and got the head teacher right-handed with the children such a case, even if I'm prepared to remove you and they want me to move out of my seat, I'm ever ready to move out because I have to sacrifice for these young ones. And it worked effectively. So can't we do some of these little, little things as district assemblies to encourage ownership of the schools at the grassroots level so that they give report even without the circuit supervisors moving when there is no fuel and where there is no transport? Can't we do it? The question is for all of us as a nation. I think the supervisory role of the GES is not enough. So I recommend that every month they do come here so that they can come and supervise what the teachers are doing. One times eight, class two. Yes. One. Are you sure? No. The, the head of the institution should be able to supervise. The basic school, they prepare what we call lesson notes. So the, the, the head of the school should be able to inspect or vet these notes and make sure 
that the skills that the students are supposed to acquire is what is contained in these notebooks. Then the inspector division of GES can also come in from time to time. Because sometimes in Ghana, if you are doing the right thing, what we say about you is you are wicked. So to help the, the headmaster in, or the head teacher in a way, then the inspector division of GES can also come in. Today we are from a certain school, we have to go there and then look at the teacher's reporting time, that's punctuality. And we found out, averagely, somebody, the whole 13 weeks that we have, his average time of reporting to school is uh, 8.30. So such a thing is outside my daily observation. And it will be difficult for me if the head teacher does not prompt me to check on that person. But he, the head teacher, is rightly there to see to it that teachers come to school on time and then do their work in time. I'm pleading with all the head teachers. We cannot be in all the schools at the same time. We come there, they tell us what is going on there. We do our best, we leave the place. They should continue from where we ended and even do more. So that it doesn't mean that it is the circuit supervisors or the officers from the office who are running their schools for them. I've moved to some schools. The head teachers are not up to the standard. We are removing them from office and replacing them with people who we think they are committed. And it is not easy. You remove, but people would like to also remove you from your seat. But I'm not worried. If I'm removed from my seat for doing the right thing, I'm not worried. I can even go back to the classroom, even KG, and teach and earn my salary. This is my way. It is surprising to note that almost all the big schools that you hear in Cape Coast, we do not have the indigenous people in the school. They are all from Accra, Kumasi, Takradi, and sometimes some part of the northern region to the schools. Only few are able to sell through, and the schools are prepared to welcome them, but they are not coming. So what do you do? That's a big problem on the heads of the headmasters and mistresses. They try to bring 30% of the indigents coming into the secondary schools. It also came with its own problems because standards were also lowered. People who didn't make the mark, out of the 30%, they were pushed into the secondary schools and it lowered the, the standard. So they're also looking for the best. So if you don't meet it, the headmasters and mistresses will not force their way to bring you on board. The teaching profession is a vital one because its effects, good or bad, are felt throughout a people's lifetime. The ability of teachers, therefore, to impact knowledge, values and attitudes is very important for the individual people, his or her family, and the wider society. In Ghana, the level of teacher training ranges from those with some amount of secondary education, commonly known as people's teachers, to graduates and master's degree holders. The majority of teachers, however, are those who have passed through training colleges or colleges of education. Those who enter the profession at a lower level often seek to upgrade themselves in order to advance up the career level. Many teachers in Cape Coast are involved in sandwich programs and distant education. While the desire to upgrade themselves is laudable, it is said that these efforts are done to the detriment of their students and peoples. So Cape Coast, the problem is the sandwich and then the uh, distance education. Most of the teachers, when you go to schools, you see that they are in school learning. But I don't blame them because in GES now, if you finish College of Education, you come out with diploma. So immediately you finish the College of Education, you go to university to learn and get degree. So when he, the person gets degree, he will bow means he or she will be promoted to principal superintendent. That's why the number of years the person has served. So if he come out from the College of Education, he wanted to upgrade him or herself, and then they will leave the classroom and go and learn. These days, the situation is such that some of the teachers are not committed. So some 
enter the profession not because they like it, but they are there so when they get the opportunity, they leave. People like that are not committed. Here in Cape Coast and like Winneba too, we have a problem because of the university. Most people who come to teach in Cape Coast come with their own agenda and chief among which is furthering their education. So they come because they want to go to the university. And we do not say they shouldn't go, but they shouldn't do that at the expense of the children and their education. The week that they have a quiz, the children suffer because they go to the classrooms with their notes. They go and set them work to do and all they do is sit down and read their notes, prepare for their quizzes. As to whether the supervision is enough or whether the heads back them, they condone with them or they themselves are also pursuing the same thing, they do not, the teachers, some of them do not teach the children. The contact hours, very few because they are almost always out or they are there but not teaching. So the commitment is not there. Some of them are also teaching subjects they are not very conversant with. So they do not know the content. Formally, teachers take steady leave and go and upgrade themselves. Now there is a minimal number of teachers who are allowed and therefore most of them are using the distant courses and then the sandwich programs. They have been offered admissions and they are going to do the program, leaving the classrooms. So you see the gap from this third week up to the 11th week, who is to be in the classroom, even if there has been effective arrangements that a teacher should help take care of their schools. One thing we have to understand is there is a way of handling, we call them multi-grade teaching. If a P4 and P5 classes are combined, they are of different grades and therefore the teacher should be given enough preparation, enough training to understand and be able to what? Handle the two classes. Since those teachers have not passed through the system, but situation has caused that they should be taken over those classes. Taking the classes will not be effective as somebody who has gone through the multi-grade training or the actual class teacher taking them. At times, too, they say we have a national service person, we are leaving the class for them. But how prepared is a national service person going to take up the children? You know, from this time going into, we have this, their NASPA week. After that, they go and leave and then they finish their program. So if we are not lucky and school doesn't break early and it falls within those periods of teaching and learning, it means that the children are going to lose this number of weeks. We don't know by their faces how many of them are doing this program, how many of them are doing this program. You can go to the schools, send circulars, that they should furnish you with the names of those teachers. The head teachers, some know them, some of them don't know them. Because they know if they expose themselves that we are offering this program in the universities, they will be, I mean, reprimanded. So they don't say, they don't tell anybody, but rather, the moment a little chance they had, they leave the school or their books are on their laps and then they'll be asking the children, have you finished the assignment? No, madam. Say, continue. So you see, preparing them to become conscious, even itself, is not there. So you realize that some of the children, when we are marking the end of the year or their BECD, you could see that a child may be given a very good responses, but he will be tampered. And within some short time, the bell will go and the child may not be able to complete the responses or one, one, one question. And that may cause the child to lose or fail or will not be able to pass in that particular subject very well. Teacher motivation is also another issue as to whether the teachers are satisfied and give of their best. Sometimes school reopens two, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, registers are not there, no chalk no teaching learning materials, how do you expect the teachers to perform? So much as some teachers are to blame for not doing well, the motivation is also not there. So we will have to tackle both.
where do teachers live? You know, it's not everywhere that you have a bank, it's not everywhere you have a hospital, it's not everywhere, but almost everywhere you have a school. And where do the teachers live? How do they get accommodation? How do they get to their schools? So all these are things that we should consider. I pray that, and I'm asking that they are motivated because they go around the schools. So they should be given fuel, means of transport, and some allowance to encourage them to do the work so that they will go. And when they come, they are monitored to show that they actually had gone around the schools. The district directors and teachers at our own level we also need to interact with leadership in these tertiary institutions, which I, in my own way, have started doing it. VC, how do we solve this problem of teachers going out of the office? Could you help us? Could we allow two teachers in a school to go for the program so that next year the opportunity will also be open for others. By then, these two people who are gone would have come to occupy the classes that are there. Can we also find when our teachers are free on holidays so that those sandwich and distance programs are put in the academic calendar such that when the teachers are free, they can access the sandwich education. But I think as a nation, we need to come out with a policy statement directing our workers that this is our stand as far as distance education is concerned. If there is no policy framework, I may act and it will be contrary to the interest and somebody can even take you on. Now, we have people they call human rights. Meanwhile, we have the rights, we don't respect the left. The left which is the responsibility of us. We don't carry out your responsibility and we want to enjoy your right. People are clamoring to come to Central Region. I'm not giving the way because we are even overstaffed. And the zeal and the commitment to send these teachers who are too much concentrated in the city center to the periphery or the rural areas is another big challenge because you remove one A to go to the place, then you have a very big opinion leader coming to say, this is my wife. Virtually, the rural area keep on suffering. But I'm saying, if we could be given the opportunity to transfer the teachers whilst they wait for their transfer grant, if we know the transfer grant is available and we are, we are given the go ahead, we can make things change. I feel pain and I have a lot of passion for our children who we are leaving behind with nothing as far as education is concerned and in the future we will be in our grace, they will be pointing fingers at us. The law is explicit on a steady leave with and without pay, but it's not explicit on distance and sandwich programs. So this is where I think if we make the policy fall in tune or in line with the steady leave with pay and without pay, then we are empowered to take action. At least when you come out from the university uh, training college, you should have spent two years if you are in a rural area or in a deprived area before you go to further your, st uh, your studies. That's for steady leave. If you are in a city, you have to spend five years before you are granted steady leave to go and stay. Why can't we use the same clause for the distance education? If we do, we are empowered. You, if you go, we block your salary or you, you go without pay. And when you come back, re-engagement we give you some number of years before you are re-engaged into the system. I think it's time for us to put sanity into the system. Sometimes unions are ready to defend the teachers when they go astray and they should be sanctioned. And I think one of the biggest challenges too is empowerment of regional directors and district directors to be able to hire and fire. If this is there, as it is in the private institutions, there will be drastic change. 
But our inability to hire and fire teachers or staff, that is one of the contributory factors. For me, I tell my students that it is because the standard of English has fallen, that's why the entire standard of uh, education has fallen. So we should address the issue of language with seriousness. If the people that are supposed to be there are not qualified, let us retrain them. And then again, it will be good if we can implement subject teaching as we do at the SS level, so that those who are more qualified, those who have what it is to handle the subject, handle it. On the teachers, I don't blame them much because they also want to upgrade their skills. So we recommend to GS if they can have the way uh, or the means of education so that the College of Education for three years you come out with your diploma, if they can make it uh, five years so that when you are coming out, you are coming out with your degree so that you can get time for the children. Because you come out with your diploma, you leave the classroom and go and then search for your, uh, your degree, for your promotion. If the district assemblies are resourced with the educational fund, it should be channeled for supervision. We have the people who are intellectual, the teachers are well-groomed, they can deliver, but the supervision. Another biggest challenge, which I think if we could, as a nation, come out with a policy, is this distance and sandwich education. It is creating a lot of vacancies or vacuums in the classroom and teachers go in pretending to be teaching. They are busy preparing their assignments to go back to the university. It is good for professional development to take place, but it must not take place at the expense of the children's education or learning. Again, the universities are autonomous. So that is where we have to say as GES, or Ghana Education Service or Ministry of Education, we should take a stand. This is the time we will allow you to go in for those courses or programs. If we don't make that pronouncement, many of the classes will continue to be empty and we look on helplessly because it's a right for an individual to be educated and we cannot deny him the right. If that is the right, but it should be done in such a way that one party does not suffer. How do we do it? We need that collaboration between the tertiary institutions, Ghana Education Service and the Ministry. That collaboration, when it is there, then we can find a way of solving this problem. Cape Coast, once a byword for educational excellence, is sinking ever deeper. The lives of the present and future generations are at stake because educated parents pass on their values and knowledge to their children. It is important to have well-trained teachers to transfer knowledge to their charges. However, their educational progress must take into account the needs of the pupils. Absentee or disinterested teachers do not bode well for our educational system. Proper monitoring will be the key to ensuring that pupils derive the maximum benefit from their teachers. This has been the curriculum, a collaboration between the GBC and Star Ghana.